We are ending the week in a wonderful way. Thanks for joining us. MLB Central on a Friday. Robert Flores, Mark DeRosa, I'm Lauren Shahadi. We love when our friends stop by Harrison Bader. The Cardinals, good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you guys for having me. Well, thanks for being with us. All your baseball accomplishments aside, Dero says top five hairstyles in the game. You <laughs> make the list and your team agrees on Twitter recently. The Cardinals tweeted out your top nine looks. We want you to check them out and tell us which one is your personal favorite. I remember all those looks. Um, <laughs> I think the one that stands out the most is probably the one where I'm wearing that purple t-shirt with those ridiculous sunglasses on and I'm kind of throwing up like a little peace sign. I remember I was, uh, we were, the team was rolling and it was just really good vibe. So I think the outfit reflects that pretty well. <laughs> Dero, which one do you like? I like, I like the one middle top right here. I'll, there's a lot, I'm catching a lot of dazed and confused Matthew McConaughey back in the day, you know, party at the moon tower. I'm digging the looks coming in. Are these all coming to the stadium? I'm enamored, Harrison. I got to ask, I'm enamored by you, Jack Flaherty, Jay Flair. Do you guys have a photographer follow you around in the parking lots and get these shots? <laughs> yeah, we actually, uh, we actually do. So the MLB goes through that, uh, that app called Greenfly. So basically, as you're approaching the stadium or getting off the bus um, and, or leaving the stadium, there's always a photographer there. And they, they upload the photos directly to the app. So it just makes the, the usability super, super simple. Um, and you can just post it right to your Instagram. So the photos are great. Yeah, me and Flair definitely uh, take advantage of them for sure. We, we need that. Once we get back to the studio, we need that. Yeah, Do we want that? You know, just stroll in. That's, that's, yeah. That's, I like Look. I, I like I like number three. I, I, yeah, I, I love the number three look. Um, you know, your Twitter profile pic, uh, Harrison, is is the back of that glorious head of hair you have. Uh, <laughs> how are you How are you managing the hair uh, during this quarantine? And what advice can you give, uh, say, me? Because mine is uh, getting out of control. <laughs> yeah, I'm right there with you. Well, I got like a curly type of like. Uh, it was a mohawk at one point, but it's kind of manifested itself, if you will, to more of like a, more of like a poof. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I just try and just try and do my best to just realize, you know, that there, my barber isn't around. So I just have to accept it for what it is and just kind of do my best to roll with it. But I think even worse than the hair is this beard, which I'm getting rid of here pretty soon. So, <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> hey, Harrison, I want to dive into a little baseball. I read an article that was posted March, March 5th. Uh, at the Post Dispatch, St. Louis, and uh, it talked about your approach at the plate, and you felt you needed to calm down. I also read an article where Matt Carpenter's dove into some virtual reality glasses during this quarantine time, and talking about pitch selection, that seems like that would be like kind of an obvious way to to work on that. So, kind of take me inside what you're doing during this downtime, shelter in place, kind of to help you with pitch selection. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, last year was, uh, was just a great example of, of just having your struggles um, and, and allowing those struggles to last longer than they really needed to be. Um, I think a lot of what I went through last year at the plate, just in my second, you know, full season at the major league level, um, was that I just didn't really look in the mirror enough. Um, I, I found myself many times throughout the season offensively looking to other players, looking to coaches for answers when um, I've come to understand that, that the best answer you can get are those that, that you can receive from the mirror. Um, um, you know, I've taken this time, especially after a little spring training stint to just really look deep, um, into what I'm trying to do at the plate, understand who I am as a player, um, and by no means limit myself or, or put myself in, in a box and, and a ceiling over my head, just rather, uh, channel my intentions at the plate, um, in, in a different way. Um, you know, I really do believe I'm, I'm an athletic hitter. Um, you know, anytime I take my, my mind to the plate with regards to like thinking about, you know my mechanical swing or, or any internal cues, I, uh, you know, you kind of freeze up, um, mm. you know, a, a lot of it has to do with just the mental approach of just understanding that I'm a guy who just needs to be a tough out every single time I'm at the plate. I need to put the ball and play hard. Um, I need to put the, play, the ball and play far more consistently, consistently. And the swings I was taking all of last year really were, they were geared in a different direction and that's just simply not my game. Um, but you know, I don't I don't shy away from from the challenge of continuing to to be the best version of myself offensively. I know it's in there. It's just a matter of me bringing it out and being more consistent with it. So 
Um, this has been a you know great time for reflection, great time to work on simple things. Uh, you know, for for when the the ball gets rolling here, it's going to happen really quickly. So you know, I'll definitely be ready for it. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'll jump in real quick. I'm sure Mike Schilt has told you, man, you ain't got to hit much. Yeah, no uh, doubt. You know, and yeah, and I think that uh, and that's the biggest thing too is like you know I've I've heard it from a lot of people. You know, you, you just hit 250. You know, you're like. You're a great defender. It's fine. It's like, well, no, you know, 250 isn't good enough for me. You know, I want to be a 300 hitter. I know I could do it. I just need to change. I just need to change my approach. And yeah, of course, you know, you want to, you know, you want to maybe cut the plate in half and understand what the guy's doing to you and this and that. But, you know, for the most part, it really is an athletic movement that you have to just be calm and relaxed and confident in your plan right before you step in that box. And if you're not, you know, you're going to get eaten alive. It's not really about pitch selection. If you put your body in a good position, um, you know, consistently to see the baseball in the order to swing, you're going to make, you know, those, those quick decisions athletically and subconsciously. Um, and then when you pair that with, with a legitimate plan and understanding of what a guy's trying to do to you, you know, then it's off to the races, but it really wasn't about the physical or looking to answers. Everything that I need is, is right in the mirror and I'm, I'm just ready for the challenge ahead. That's a great answer, man. Uh, you know, Harrison on Monday on MLB network, it's Albert Pujols day. Uh, obviously, you weren't uh, you weren't around when he was in St. Louis, but you can speak to the legacy that he still has uh, in St. Louis and that trip that he made when the Angels came to town. That's certainly something that uh, fans there will always remember. What what legacy does he still have there in the city of St. Louis? Ah, it's incredible. Um, you know, he still has his foundation, obviously, uh, which helps a tremendous number of people. Which which I just I love and appreciate so much, especially when players. Obviously, in St. Louis, it's special because. Players have the ability to touch so many fans um, and just do so much for them. Um, and it's, it's reciprocated with the love we receive from them. So, uh, you know, when Pujols got to, uh, got to St. Louis, I had no idea what was in store. I knew it was going to be a, a big deal. But, um, you know, he really did shut the entire city down. He shut the games down. Um, you know, we saw the, uh, the ovations that he got, you know, um, and he had a home run off Dakota Hudson. And I, I haven't really heard that stadium cheer louder uh, than I did then. And it kind of, it took me out of the game for a second. You know, it, it made me realize that, like, nobody's ever bigger than the game, but there's just a different level of respect and appreciation for certain figures in the game, especially when they come back to, to cities. And, and Albert rolling back to St. Louis, um, you know, and in true fashion, just, you know, just going to work and just putting up numbers. Um, I think it was great not only for a young player like myself to understand how, how precious all this is, but, but also for, for Albert. You know, he just did so much for that city um, and just led those – teams along with others to to just so many victories and so many positive things so it was an awesome moment for him but also for uh, for guys like me well apparently Harrison you are becoming pretty darn important in St. Louis as well especially according to Sonic last postseason came up with the Bader Tots what is in them did you try them are they delicious <laughs> they absolutely are delicious they are tater tots and um, they have like a little spice to them they have some cheese on them um, you know obviously you know just a fun little playoff of play off the name Bader Tots, but um, yeah, I mean, it's it just, it's really cool. Like I said before, there's just so much love in that city. Uh, and I, you know, in my head, I go out there and I, I roll around in the mud and, and grass for three hours a day and just have an absolute ball doing it. So um, the love I receive as a result is just incredible. And, and the Bader Tots is uh, just a, a fun little thing that, that Sonic has done. Harrison, I wanted, to, I wanted to ask you, we had Brent Suter on about two weeks ago talking about Milwaukee. I got traded over to St. Louis in 09, and I was only there for about two, three months. I got the corporate apartment right off the highway, and it was to the stadium and back, to the stadium and back, until we went to the, got eliminated from the postseason. What does Harrison Bader do on an off day in St. Louis? <laughs> so you <laughs> take me through uh, something. Yeah, no doubt. So you know, obviously, I'm you know I'm from New York City, so it's a little different. You know, going to the Midwest, I've kind of had a tour of the Midwest. Um, which is in many ways drastically different than what I've kind of been brought up in and everything, which is awesome because I'm, I'm always seeing, I always want to find, you know, I want to see people, I want to meet people. I want to understand different, different parts of this country and, and the Midwest is no different. So my off days um, are, are very, um, very different than what you might expect. Um, Paul DeYoung and I will, will go skeet shooting. I have a beautiful um, crack pump shotgun that, that we go skeet shooting with. Um, Sometimes, um, like, we'll, we'll go to St. Louis-specific restaurants um, that, that really kind of dive into a different taste uh, and different cuisine that St. Louis is known for. 
Um, you know, the season's long, we all know that, so I really do like to hang out, but there are definitely some St. Louis specific activities that, that I've gotten into that I really wouldn't get otherwise. Is fried uh, ravioli good, Harrison? Because we have some crazed St. Louis fans in the building, cool. and all they do is talk about fried ravioli, toasted ravioli, rather. Yeah, it's, a, uh, it's an acquired taste, in my opinion, but it is very good. <laughs> in other words, no. <laughs> yeah, a, 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 a. In other words, not, not my the token no. answer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, not my go-to, but I have that. Hey, uh, Harrison, you recently spank, uh, spoke to a uh, undergrad sports management class at Rutgers via a conference call. Uh, what was the most important piece of advice that you offered to him? Uh, that's a good question. There, I mean, there, there were a lot of good, uh, a lot of good questions in there. You know, they were graduate students, so I kind of knew going into it, I might, you know, get uh, get some pretty complex questions. But I think the number one thing was that I, honestly that stuck with me the most was. Um, a girl asked me if I didn't if I didn't physically play baseball, if I wasn't good at baseball, would I see myself in the game? Um, and that was a really interesting question because, you know, what do I hang on to so much about baseball? And without a doubt, it's the physical side. Um, going out there, everything in preparation, um, the actual, you know, the, the art of playing the game correctly and winning games. I mean, uh, that's what I love the most. So my answer to her was, I don't know. Um, but it kind of, it brought me back to just, we talked a lot about passion um, and understanding, you know, the willingness of an athlete to kind of leave everything aside to just chase something, to chase this dream, you know, and there were plenty of decisions where I, you know, I put academics aside um, and I, I definitely went out on a, on a limb and my parents did as well um, to, to allow me and position me to, to, you know, follow my dream. And, and these students all, which were fascinating to me, they all love the game, if not more than me, just as much, or they love, you know, the, the side of sports. Um, and it was, it was awesome because if I didn't have my physical connection to the game, I don't know if I'd play baseball. I don't know if I would be in the game. I don't know if I'd be on the front office side or whatever, but, but a lot of these students, um, they just, they have a different route and a different passion about the game that drives them. So it was really cool to connect with these students, um, on a different side, because at the end of the day, when, when a team wins a world series, in my opinion, it's not the 25 guys on that roster that win the, that world series. It's, the management, it's the front office, it's the scouts that got those players there. Or, you know, there are some players who get traded right before, you know, the deadline, and then they're ultimately a, a big playoff piece. And, and there, there's talent and there's scouts that go into it. So it really is a team effort. So being a part of a conversation with, with, not, with everybody on not the playing side was, uh, was really cool for me. You mentioned interesting questions, Harrison. I have one for you. Who is your favorite University of Florida alum? Ooh, that's a good one. Danny Worthen. I'm not going to say Tim Tebow, <laughs> as everybody would say. Um, he's pretty, he's pretty, uh, pretty well known and pretty well loved. So I'll go, I'll go a different route. Emmett Smith. Emmett Smith was a good one. Um, good one. I think my favorite alum. It's a trick question, Harrison. I should have brushed up more. Me. It's Lauren. <laughs> I, no. I, yeah, I should have brushed up more on my Florida Gator alumni history. <laughs> <laughs> I went there like 800 years before you, Tim Tebow, for I didn't know that. I didn't know you went to the University of Florida. Go Gators. Yeah, like a really long, long, oh, long whatever, time whatever, Robert. Never left the dorm room. <laughs> There's some good spots. Was Cantina around? Say it again. 101 Cantina, was that around? No. <laughs> the swamp. Was, was Senor Frogs there? I was there when Spurrier was there. <laughs> Um, when Spurrier was there? Okay, yeah, yeah. All right. Long ago. Lauren, oh. he's trying to ask if you know of bars in the Gainesville area. and yeah, you like the, They're like the famous bars. Like, what's the other he one? He doesn't know me. He doesn't know that I'm boring, D-Ro. Yeah. So let's just go with it. Pretend like I'm a lot of fun. He dated a beekeeper uh, there in, while in, in college. He was not a beekeeper. He was a beekeeper. <laughs> Please. He stung himself with bees as an anti-inflammatory. Harrison, you get it. You're an athlete. No, that makes perfect sense, actually. <laughs> Don't patronize. <laughs> hey, Harrison, it was great. Uh, it was great catching up with you, man. Uh, really good stuff. Uh, safe travels. Uh, hopefully, you guys are back very, very soon. And uh, we really appreciate you joining us. Absolutely. Thank you guys for having me. Great to talk to you. And obviously, be safe. So I'll see you guys around. Hey, a couple of quick programming notes. Uh, we've got the uh, MLB The Show Players League. A uh, preview special coming up. That's going to be on MLB Network tonight, 7 o'clock Eastern. And then the playoffs on FS1 and ESPN 
throughout the weekend on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So a lot to get to so as we uh, crown a champion. There, there's a whole trophy. You should see the trophy that the Players League champion gets, guys. It's unbelievable. <laughs>